the summer, winter, but it's coming. Was today's testimony actually a de facto campaign stop? Joining me now to talk about the inaccuracies of Al Gore's vision and inconvenient truth, as well as what that vision could cost us, is Chris Horner. He's the author of The Politically Incorrect Guide to Global Warming and Environmentalism. Chris, i got to tell you, first of all, what a great book. Thank love, you. love, love, love your book. I have laughed out loud through many of uh, through much of it. I enjoy reading it. Um, and. You enjoy reading it? Were you asking you say that about me, or is this the first time you've read your book? No, it's actually it's the several, uh, maybe the fourth, fifth, sixth time. Every time I pick it up, it's a handful of laughs. It's great. Um, what did you think of his appearance on uh, in front of Capitol Hill today? Uh, no real surprises, no real gotcha moments from the members. That's always difficult when you refuse to submit your testimony in advance, as the rules require. Uh, probably the most fascinating moments was the series of things he orchestrated to make sure we never forget that Al Gore's different than we are. The rules don't apply to him, whether it involves a carbon footprint, the clotheslines he insists we all have to spread, or submitting your testimony, testifying sometimes with others, but under time constraints and so on. I think the best moment to help remind us of who we're dealing with. The man that the Democratic National Committee described as having no sense of proportion is the man who said today, I've been to Chernobyl. I've been to Three Mile Island. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not exactly the same. That's Have you seen the devastation? I, <laughs> one's in a shroud. And a, you sweep the bodies off the doorstep every morning. Come it's on. It's crazy. You know, that is one thing that um, uh, is very, very interesting to me. I believe it's one of the guys, one of the first guys on global warming, um, it, it, he was discredited or at least kind of broomed out of the global warming community because he said the best way to deal with it is nuclear energy. And nobody wants to talk about nuclear energy. Right. They say that tens of thousands will die, but your atoms, they frighten me. Yeah. Now, there's a certain moral tension there. Because, remember, many countries have managed to do what the Soviet Union didn't manage to do. As P.G. O'Rourke said, they couldn't build a toaster that didn't blow up the breakfast nook. Uh, France, 80% nuclear power dependent. Taiwan, South Korea, Japan. Many countries do this without the policy mistakes of making sure that they have a waste problem like we do. They reclaim the spent material. We've made that essentially illegal. So maybe the French actually can teach us something. It's, but nuclear is the solution if you really believe this. And I think by his lifestyle, if nothing else, he doesn't. Now, but what he's proposing is, see, I'm convinced. Uh, look, I believe that something is happening with our planet, but I believe it's natural. And I don't, maybe we're helping cause it, making it worse. I don't know. Um, the real question is whether we can make it better. What he's proposing is... Um, astronomical in uh, in its cost. Uh, it, it's my understanding that just if the EU really implemented the Kyoto Treaty, it would cost, is it nine trillion dollars in the next hundred years, which would reduce the temperature by one degree or no, stop global warming for two extra years. It's something like that, isn't it? Uh, it's an astounding amount of money. With the Europeans, you can never tell. They're not really reducing emissions. They're buying indulgences from Canada. What we do know, because the clinton Gore administration is unimpeachable, so to speak, as far, at least as far as their data, Al Gore returned from the Kyoto uh, negotiations when we did agree to the Kyoto Protocol, and we did sign it a year later, by the way. George Bush can't sign Kyoto. We only sign treaties once. He asked the Energy Information Administration, how much will this thing cost? And they came back and said, up to 4% of GDP every year. To put it in perspective, that's five times the cost of the Iraq War every year for the other people he asked, what would this do? Tom Wigley of a group called NCAR out in Boulder said it would delay for six years an undetectable seven one hundredths of one degree Celsius at a cost of five times the Iraq War every year. But gee, a whole bunch of Europeans might like us. Probably right. not. And it's also, that's just Kyoto. Chris, thank yes, you. Thanks. One programming